engineered myocardial tissue has been developed over the last 60 years and has a wide range of potential clinical benefits. Heart disease is the leading cause of death of human in the past 20 years. More than 50% of death of human is caused by coronary heart disease. In order to fix the disease, damage and disorders, surgeons and medical scientists do on many strategies. For example, transplantation and a total artificial heart are used for fixing critically failed heart, but a limited number of donors and the long waiting list make this one unrealistic. Disease size diagnosis can be fixed using autographs or artificial heart valves, but the availability of donors is limited and the reliability of the implant is is also a concern. Stent can be used to support and reinforce collapsed arteries and electronic devices such as pacemakers and ventricular assisting devices can be used as well. The concept of tissue engineering is introduced in 1987 which allowed the application of native tissue and cells to improve and promote tissue regeneration. Since tissue is defined as a group of cells with similar structure and function, cardiac tissue is also comprised of many cell types. Therefore, any tissue engineering technique must mimic the cellular variety. Current studies into engineered heart tissue have shown that populations of many cell types, rather than just myocytes, have shown improved organelle development and increased survival, contractility and organisation of the all-important myocytes. These features can also be enhanced through the use of mechanical and electrical stimulation. Cardiac tissue has a specific set of properties, such as Frank Stalin mechanism and a response to calcium. Again, any tissue engineering technique must be able to replicate these properties. However, current engineered heart tissue has shown an oversensitivity to calcium and reduced contractility. Therefore, further work is necessary. A limiting factor for all branches of tissue engineering is vascularization, the blood supply to a tissue. The diffusion limit of oxygen is 100 to 200 micrometers, but this value is dependent on the metabolic activity of a certain tissue. Since cardiac tissue is highly metabolic, even small tissue engineered constructs need to be vascularized. Techniques to overcome this have used a network chainmail like structure of myocytes, natural vessel implantation, or vessel formation known as angiogenesis. Some studies into the implantation of engineered heart tissue onto rat myocardium have also been conducted. These have shown prolonged survival, spontaneous beating, and the migration of other cell types. However, these effects are small and have only been conducted on healthy heart tissue. Furthermore, there is no evidence to support new cardiac growth or increased cardiac function, again suggesting further work is necessary. The materials that are used in cardiac tissue engineering or collagen type 1 or type 4 present in high concentration of nitrogel or biodegradable elastomeric polyurethane patterned with laminin lanes. And recent developments include polylactic acid or polyglycolic acid scaffolds and also algae or gelatin as scaffold materials as well. There are several factors that affect cell orientation and cell growth. The factors being the microstructure of the scaffold and the orientation of the growth substratum we can use external stimulations to enhance these factors in cell growth. Cool. Methods like mechanical straining, electrical stimulation, high magnetic field and photolithographic patterning can be used to enhance cell orientation and orientation of growth substratum. And lastly, the optimal scaffold material that we have at the moment is collagen and laminin present in high concentration of nitrogen and for the future we could expect electrospin collagen collagen tubes with elastin to replicate the physiological properties of cardiac tissues. There are some key things for future development. One of them is the sources for cardiac tissue neurons. Adult organism stem cells which obtain from bone marrow or fetal blood can regenerate new myocardium. Another one is progenerate cell which is set in heart. It has ability to differentiate into functional cardiac outside to repair heart. The last one is embryonic stem cell. This kind of cells have ability to form at any type of cells in the human body, so it can spontaneously differentiate into cardiac myocytes. The matrix materials are also important to investigate in the future because 
The current material of tissue graft are not suitable for cardiac tissue engineering due to its complex structure. So far, the collagen tube is a kind of potential material for cardiac tissue engineering. And the automatic fabrication of synthetic copy is an ideal technology to make them. In summary, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in Western populations, resulting in a number of corrective surgical techniques, however, each with their own limitations. The construction of myocardial tissue engineering began in the 1950s and development currently stands at the in vitro study of scaffold material types alongside stimulus in cellular environments. In vivo study has also been initiated. However, much work still remains before the use of engineered heart tissue for human repair. Future prospects include research into other cell sources, such as stem cells, and the study of scaffolds, assessing different material types, its construction and nanostructure. Collaboration between material scientists, engineers, biologists and physicists may result in better progress in obtaining optimal tissue engineered myocardium that can mimic physiological and mechanical properties of native cardiac tissue.